talk about advantages, disadvantages, that sort of thing. So, my very first collets were on this guy, and Oop, let me get that to the way. They were a very specific little collet. Can you see that? We can zoom in on it if yeah. you want. Okay. And so it's just a, it is like an ER collet sort of, but it isn't. And it just it doesn't uh, release itself automatically or anything, but that's what it is. So I bought this guy about 20 years ago, and I used it mainly for doing small metal work and stuff. And I found that the collets were really useful. Uh, but the range limit is very limited on this. The largest collet is 5 sixteenths, and it's not a through collet, so you can only just barely grip with it. Um, in recent, in the last year or so, they've now come out with an adapter that screws on here, which now gets me into a, an ER16, which is a bigger collet, and it goes up to 10 millimeters, so it gives me a, a more of a range. And I use this a lot for making small parts, ferrules, uh, pen parts, all that sort of thing. Um, I don't turn much wood on this anymore, but uh, 20 years ago I did pens on it. Not anymore. Okay. So those were the first collets I ever had, and I found them very useful for doing small parts and holding things. Um, the next collets that I ended up getting were MT2 collets. And so these collets... Um, just go into your head, just go, of course that's in there. Yeah. Uh -oh. So you would just fit in like that. Come in on the draw bar, and as you tighten this up, it draws in. What are the advantages of this type? Well, you don't have any extra pieces, so you've got one collet on the taper. So you should get the best concentricity with this one. Uh, the, the problem with these is the largest size you have is half inch. Um, I use these guys mainly I used to use them a lot more until I got into ER calls, which we're going to talk about. But um, you're kind of limited in the range that you can use. But they're very great for doing mandrels. Because now, this is the half inch, so you can just make a half inch shaft on your mandrel. This is a pin mandrel. That would go in like that. We would draw that in with the draw bar, and we'd grip that. Um, good constant, and then this pin goes on. A ring block of wood, yes. And so this goes on over that pin. I can come into this. There is a, a center on this, so I could come in with a not this type of center. All right. You can get the keeper. So now we can work on our piece. This will eventually. I'll have to put all that in first. If I put enough pressure on this, it'll actually. So that pin, it lets you move it 
But once you, once you twist it, now it's locked in. And so I can turn away on this, turn this down, do whatever I want. This is for making duck calls, by the way. And uh, the thing with duck calls is that you have to work on the throat. So once I've got this turned, I'll leave this in like so and uh, turn that down to whatever shape I want. And then I can come back like this, loosen this off, slide it out a little bit, and now I can work on the mouth here. And and because you're going to be putting that up to your to your mouth to blow on, etc. So that's just a a little advantage of these guys. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. And and it's just because when you do it the other way, you, you can do it with one of these guys to a knee air collar. But now you've got this, and then you've got to call it in here, and this going into that, and you're just more room for movement. Pass a couple of these around so you can. I don't know how many people have seen MT2 collars before. They're not that common. <clears throat> but they're very handy for that. Um, so then, before I got the next thing was is R8 collars. Now, unfortunately, so an R8 doesn't really fit anything on the lathe, but you can get up to 7 eighths of an inch on this, which gives you quite a bit of range, and it's got a very deep throat. So that, the throat for this goes right down to the edge of these lines, so it's very deep. Um, I had Richard make me an adapter. so that we could put this on here, which then gives me an R8, and this goes in, and away you go. You put a, another threaded rod in here, and draw this in, and it pulls. Now, the, the disadvantage with both the MT2 and the, uh, and the R8s, is that you, you only have a single slot coming through, and when you crimp, you're really gripping it mostly at the front end. You're not really gripping it at the back end. Not really. Most of your gripping power is at the front. So if you've got a long shaft in there, and if it wasn't really a good fit, that's the other thing about these, they have very limited range of closure. So, if this says 7 eighths, you've got to be within um, a, a few thousand. Like, I would say, you can probably get away with being even a hundredth of an inch out, maybe. But that would be really it. Would you say, Richard? Yeah. You know, that's yeah. really. So, you want to have a good tight fit with these guys. And you lose accuracy the further you are away from That's them. right. That's right, It'll, because you know there's just more room for it to, to move around in there. And I mean, ER trucks have been around forever, but um, if you go out and buy a set of Beal chucks, call it set, they're a hundred and fifty, sixty dollars something like that. So it was quite an investment to, to get into a set. Um, Yogi mm -hmm. got a nice set. Yogi, can I just see that one of yours for a minute? Because I actually don't have one of these. You know, it'd be nice just to show people. So this is, this is a PSI knockoff of the Beal. 
And so this collet, it's an ER32 collet. This will just thread on like so, and your collets So the collet goes in sideways, locks in, and now it's locked. So it ejects itself when you, uh, you close it up. And when you release it, it, it opens and pulls it back. Very handy. This is a really nice set. Um, ER, this is based on an ER32 collet. And the normal range for this, for ER32, goes up to three quarters of an inch. You can get an oversize one that's a sixteenth oversize from that, but they cost more money to buy the single pallets, and you usually don't get them in the sets. Then, so how much does that knock off of the veal set? I am not sure exactly, but it is around a hundred dollars. Yeah, hundred dollars U.S. I think. Uh, fifteen dollars. I got it for fifteen at a flea market last year. Yeah, unbelievable. No, I want actually run So. Then we have ER columns, and they come in all different sizes. So, and you can have lots of these for different reasons. This one I haven't even taken out of the package. Look at that. So this is an ER11 column. Yes. When you say ER, the number, what's the number mean? I, the number is is the size. Size. Okay. So it's millimeters. There it isn't. It's not anything like oh, that. Okay. So that is a 11. That is a 16. That's the next size up. Just put these aside. What's that? I think the number is represents the maximum size that it can hold in that series. It won't. It won't. It, 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 yeah, an e, an er. Uh, it's primarily the outside shape. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's a bunch of these. I had to catch this one. Er. What's that? Er. It's. Just it's just what they call them. What just like this they call an R8. There's also a 5C, but uh, 5Cs are are quite a bit different type of collet, and and uh, none of our woodways would handle those. It'd be a pain to try and make something to, to work on them. So that is a 20. The ones that, are, that you know, I, I don't open them up until I actually go to use them. So that is a 20. And, sorry, that's a 25. So 11, 16, 20, 25, and... Would the machinist handbook have any information on that? They have all kinds of information on these guys. Yep, everything. You know, the torquing specs, everything on it. 
So that is sort of the range of collets. So this goes up to a, a quarter inch in, uh, in imperial, and I think it goes to seven millimeters in, um, in metric. But you'd have all different heads for each. And you have different heads for every one. So this is a 32 head. This is a 25 head. This is a 20 head. This is a 16 head. And I don't, I don't actually have a head for this one. I have just a, a straight shaft for this, and I just use it for gripping small uh, drill bits and things. So when you buy, if you were to buy extra collets, like different sizes, it's, it's an ER32 head. Yes. So whatever whatever head you decide to go with, yeah. you want to buy your series in okay. that. Um, now, what are the advantages of these collets? Well, when you look at them, the first thing you'll see is that they're cut from the bottom up to the top, but they're also cut from the top down to the bottom. They have a taper on this side and this side. This is a 30 degree taper and I think this is 8, I think, 8 degrees there. And so when it gets scrunched up, it actually closes it at the back and it closes it at the front at the same time. So you get maximum holding power with ER collets. Um, everybody, everybody's heard me talk about Banggood, and uh, so this is just an MT2 32 uh, ER32. So the first thing you have to do is always put your collet in. You put it in sideways until it pops in, snaps. Don't fall out now. And you put that in, put your drawbar in to hold this in. The drawbar now isn't actually closing up the collet. It's just holding that collet into your headstock so that when you start to turn, it doesn't fall out. Yeah, that that's, scary. that's scary. Yeah. Um, so, ER32 up to three quarter inch. That, uh, the Beal kits are th based on 32s. The problem with 32s is um, the smaller ranges, like the smaller sizes. They, and the collets are expensive. More steel costs more. So, um, that is a, it's a good option, those. A 25 gets you up to 5 eighths of an inch. Um, I actually like the size of this. It's, it's, a, it's a nice compact little guy. Probably if I was going to go with a collet um, for doing smaller stuff, pens, all that sort of stuff, um, I would probably choose a 20 as a as a good all around. It goes up to half an inch, um, goes down to one millimeter in size. In, in millimeters it goes up to uh, to 13 millimeters. You can get the oversized collet for this which takes you up to five eighths. So you know you, you've got a bit of range there for, for a very small collet. One of the reasons I have 16s is, of course, because I can put 16s on this guy, and so it makes sense. And uh, so Banggood sells these collet heads, collet chucks, for about $15 for this and about $20 
for the big one. And the call it sets, depending on what you get, so if you get, for this one, you can get a seven piece call it set, which goes in water, in uh, eighth inch increments, for about thirty-five dollars. No tax, no shipping. No tax, no shipping. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they're starting to charge a little bit for shipping now, but it's only one or two dollars, so it's not a big deal. Yes. The the big maintenance with them is to keep the grooves clean, and so I uh, use a toothbrush to just make sure that. Especially if I'm doing metal work and stuff, you can get little metal chips caught in there, and so I you know, brush out those. Uh, you want to clean your surfaces inside here. This wants to be clean. So when you go to use it, you know, you take a, a cloth, clean it out on the inside. Um, helps to clean up the threads every once in a while because they get junk in them. This one's pretty dirty, I was using it the other day. So just clean out those threads. Clean up the inside threads here. <laughs> Terrific holding power with these. They just fall off on your shipping thing. Yes. Uh, you, you're right in the sense that they've started to make the full shipping method charged. Yep. A full drop down list. And yep. you usually pick another one which is free. Yes, you, you can sometimes pick so, the, so the free I, one. I even, I mean, yep. I, I order some of them semi regularly and I don't know if I've ever paid shipping. Yeah, I, I sometimes do, if, especially uh, if I want to track it. Money and you want a tracking number. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, two to two or three dollars for a tracking number, I'll go for it. Especially if it's a fairly <laughs> large order, you know, it's it's really worthwhile. Um. Yeah. All right. What? So, how do we use these things? Well, one of the really nice things about call it checks is, um, oh yeah, and I should tell, I should just talk about eccentricity on these guys. Um, so this has an X on it. I won't actually put a bar on that, but. So oh, I think, hey, that's looking not so bad. What's going on here? <laughs> the heel. Yeah, it's moving just a little bit. It's about, about five one thousandths out on that. That's funny because I was trying this one on my way the other day and it was way the heck out. Need a new lathe. What's that? Need Maybe a new lathe. Maybe it's a lathe, yeah. But anyway, that's what you would do is put a, a dial indicator on, put a rod in it, and just check. Preferably, you know, use a piece of rod that you know is, is really straight, like a, a good brand new drill bit or something like that. <laughs> so, um, the other thing that's kind of cool about them is you can make um, chucks and handles for doing, for holding small items. You know, you, this, is not, this is a carbide point on there that I use for um, when I'm going to burn lines, I use this to just put a little mark in just to etch. I can turn it, reverse it, close it up, and it saves the point from getting broken. So that's a little advantage. Um, and I, if I, I didn't probably bring one that'll fit in here, but you can get like a straight taper that would just go in there and now you can convert your handle into a, into a collet chuck for holding stuff. And they hold quite, quite well. Richard has a few of these from me that uh, we've modified that way and made them into collet chucks. 
All right. So let's let's do some. So this is an item that I'm working on. Um, I won't pull it out of there, just because it's it's in there and it's been in there for a while. But this is a long taper. Uh, I don't know how else you would do this if you didn't have collet chuck to hold it. So put this between centers. You can. You probably can't see inside. Yeah, you can. Yeah, can you? So I've put, a, I've put centers on both ends of this, turned it on the lathe on the <clears> centers, turned my, my three-quarter inch tenon on the end, plugged it in there. Then I came in and used a tapered reamer. I drilled a hole first, used a tapered reamer to ream this out. And I made a matching piece that that taper just fits perfectly. That will eventually be glued in there once I'm all done. Um, this is going to be thinned out. It's, this is actually a, like a, a Harry Potter type wand. There's a more of a handle here on it. It's a multi piece. It's an art piece. Um, and then this will come down to within about um, an eighth of an inch of that taper. And then we're going to actually go in with a, a Dremel and, and carve it out so that you'll get the, the uh, ebony showing through on that. And then down here, this gets cut off here and there's a, a silver band goes in there that's studded with diamonds and uh, not real diamonds. Um, <laughs> Will it still work? <laughs> yeah, it might. It might. And then there's another another handle part that's in a in a flame, and then you know it, the whole wand is about that long. Anyway, so that is how you would go about. Can you pull that out? It's been in there for so long now. Um, what I thought I'd start off today looking at. So this is another little pin vise. Um, which I was able to make this. Can you see that, Gary? Yeah, we'll bring it up. There you go. So this is meant for a three eighths uh, pen tube. So it's actually smaller than three eighths because the, the pen tubes are measured in the outside diameter of it. Uh, it just fits nicely. <coughs> into here, into a collet. Um, this was made on this guy. There is a two millimeter drill rod pin that allows you, you put that in the center, your piece just slides on, and when we go to cut, now it locks. So, let's Set that up. Now, <clears throat> we were saying that this one was out and the other one was good. So let's. So in the front. So get there. So what this allows you to do So 
Well, usually people were asking about you know how you go about using these things, and so what I like to do when I'm doing stuff. So this is going to be a blind pen end. So it's not actually going to be like a chip pin. And so I would come in with this, turn this on. I've already done it on this one. But then I would come in with that turning. You're locked. And I would just come in. Get my center on that. You wouldn't want to really turn this without a live center to, to rough it out. We'll just put a little steady rest on that. Remember that there's a very small piece of metal holding that. I think I've actually got a little bit of the uh, of the center still on that. The center point that I put in. So I'm just gonna shorten this up a little bit more. Because it's a girl, I have a little bit 
too aggressive there. And took a chunk out of it. A little bit more than sawdust on that one. I, was, I knew I was right near the end of that cut. And, and so, you know, that was the... And it holds very solid. And you see how easy that came off? I just twisted it back and pulled it back. So that's one way you could use a collet chuck. Um, Where did you get that pin chuck? I made it. I made it. $29.95. What's that? Nobody sells them. Nobody sells pin chucks. Um, they're, they're uh, you know, a, ma a made item. Um, so, I'll pass this around so people can see it. Maybe I'll pass it around. Done that before? Pull <laughs> on something. Yeah. Secure. Yeah, I think that it hasn't released on the. Uh... So, because this is an aluminum piece, if you were to just grip this with a regular uh, one of these guys, you would cut into that metal pretty quickly and you'd lose any eccentricity. Uh, constant kind. Contricity that you had. So I'll pass this around. There's the pin that goes with it. They're quite easy to make. You just have to have you just have to have a a small metal aid or something. one of the big advantages of repeatability. The repeatability of it, exactly. You can take it in and out and in and out, and it's perfect every time. Don't have to put any registration marks on it. You no know, registration marks. When the other thing about it is when you grip with this, it's a full circular grip around that metal, that wood. And so it doesn't it doesn't deform the wood as much as if you were trying to grip it with something else, like even um, using like pin jaws. On a on a on a uh, call on a scroll on a scroll chuck like this, um, you don't get the constant the concentricity that you would get with a pin chuck with with a call chuck. <coughs> yep. I was looking into those things. And really, we stop looking at it. If you want to buy a whole set, sure you can buy a whole set. But what are you going to really use? What do you act, what do you actually make? And for me, I'm looking at something. I'd probably come down and have so three inch, maybe half inch, yeah, quarter inch. You know, that's yeah, big, yeah. Big, so oh, you don't need the whole freaking set. You don't need the whole the whole set. But you know what? The sets are so damn cheap now. So a dang good, a set of seven of the ER collets, the bigger collets. Uh, under 30 bucks. 35 for just one month. Um, yeah. Now, <laughs> and for the ER20 collets, you get a set of like, I want to say 12 or 14 collets for under 30 bucks. So why wouldn't you get the whole set? Why wouldn't you get a set in metric and a set in Imperial. Um, that's why I have so many because I have a lot of, so my big collet here I have mostly in just uh, Imperial 16th, 16th of an inch 
for a lot of it for the smaller sizes. Um, eighth inch up to three quarters. And then I have a few metric sizes in addition where I could buy them. Um, for the 20s, I have a full set of imperial and a full set of metrics. The other thing about these collets is they have a one millimeter range on their, on their closure. So very versatile that way. You can close that right down and it closes up all of those little fingers and um, you can take it right down. So if you have like this one here, it's a 5 16 so that would actually close down to, to almost a quarter inch. Yeah. But your, your best results are going to be if you put fifth, fifth, uh, 5 16 in that. Okay, um, finials. So the beauty about finials, so this is another little project that I was working on. I haven't quite finished it, but started off, um, put this between centers, turned a little tenon on it. Not a very big tenon, that's more than I need for collets able to then bore it out inside, do all my shaping, basically free. Then I've got a matching piece here that I put another small tenon on that I could work with. That guy goes, it's a, it's a pretty good fit inside there. That's gonna eventually get glued in there. And the reason I did that, is I wanted a very shallow, a very uh, thin wall here so that I could cut it out so it matches the ring. So the idea is that your ring goes in like that. It's about the thickness of the ring. This will eventually get cut off at an appropriate height here. And then using another collet, gripping on this end, I was able to make a matching piece cap that's gonna go over top of this. And then this wall is also thin. It'll be cut away so that it goes over the ring too. And hopefully all of the uh, grain patterns are going to line up so that when it's all together, it'll look like it's all one piece. But you'll be able to take the top off. This will be like a little finial up here eventually. Um, and then there was going to be a series of, of three or four of these on a, on a thing, different heights, with different rings on them, so that you could have you know, a, a sort of a ring storage setup. The collets let you do that. It'd be very difficult to do that kind of a project without collets. Um, so, I did have a piece of quality here. So, normally what I would do is I would take my block, put it in a, in a piece like this, and I would find the center using a uh, center drill on this, center drill it on both ends. Then I've got a reference point. Then I can put that between centers and, and rough it out to turn to a round. Then I can, and I can put my tendon on here to fit my collar. Now, I just want to see what the heck I should do here. I guess I'll do that. I could cheat and I could just take electric drill and... Yeah. I, 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 yeah, the problem is the wrench is too big for that. <laughs>
tighten this up, but I'll just make sure that it's tight. The center drill, put in a 60 degree taper on that, tapered uh, guide hole. My stuff at home like this. My tailstock never lines up quite as well. I got too much wobble in it, you know. The you buy a right -hand? I guess I'm gonna have to buy a right hand, I guess. Alright, we put some centers in that. Um, Amazingly, those came out pretty close to just being centered on what I had marked. PSA step center, not as good as this as the Soviet ones, Sorby ones. So that's all the tendon you really need to grip that guy. And we'll go with the 20 half inch. That point just flies out of there. It's a cheap one, so it doesn't stay in. Yeah, glue. 
Well, it's got it's not spring loaded, you oh, see, so no. it's got to move. But oh, okay. <laughs> it has retainer screw never stays in; it flies out into the sawdust and lost. Okay, um, let's get on with this. So you only hand tighten your retainer ring? No. Oh, okay. You shouldn't. Yeah. You know, it, it has a lot of, like, that would probably stay just by yeah. doing that. I see guys, a few guys on YouTube and stuff, and the guy just goes like that and then starts turning. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's all I need, you know. If you were working on metal, you can go up to 30, po 30 foot pounds on these collets. Amazing. Look at that. Just slid right in. Just slid right in. Okay, so we're going to do a little finial here. I'm going to rough it down a little bit first just to get some of that bulk away. And um, So I could pull this out a little bit and then turn that over. A little bit of chip out there on that piece, darn. Anyway, um, but you can see, you know, it just, I, I can't imagine being able to do that in a, in a scroll tuck with, with pin jaws and not have it start to wobble, move, do all that stuff. <laughs> so, So that's basically how I use collets. And um that's good solid wood. Good wood to turn, I call it. Holly is nice wood to turn, it sure is. Um so any questions?
So the reason the reason I do the the two <coughs> ends to get it sort of concentric and stuff to and get it roughed out. If you were trying to turn that to rough that out in the collet without a live center, it would be pretty tough. And lots of times, you know, if you want to go back on something, you need to have some way to hold it. Like you can see when I was doing um, the wand piece here. When I want to put that on a center again, when I when I got this out to here and I'm trying to do something, I put it back in a center and work on it from from center points because this will get all tapered right down to to about a quarter inch or so. <laughs> it does. It really does. You know, um, I could probably take that piece now, put that back in the thing, tighten it up, and it would probably run pretty true again. Um, but because of the multiple changes of Chuck, you go you start with your stem center. Yeah. You know, you put it to your pin jaws to the drill to start your center, your center drill. Yeah. Then you step center. Yeah. Uh, to turn your tenon. Yeah. And do some roughing, and then you move your culvert. You'd be doing it in batches. You would do it in batches. Sure You'd you would. You would sure you would. If you were, if you were doing this on a production kind of scale, mm -hmm. you know, you would set it all up. And in fact, you wouldn't even have to do those centers on the lathe like that. I just like to do it because I do pens and I have the jaws and I, you know, it's what I do. But, you know, I could easily just as well just mark off my center on that, put a, and just, just eyeball it, put it in the centers. Doesn't matter where you put the holes, even if it's crooked. Once you rough it out, it's, it's now concentric. Once you've got your 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 uh, pins in there, um, yeah, I guess that's nothing about the tag. Um, tag. Okay, we can talk about the tag a little bit. Um, So the tag, you're, you're pretty limited, what you can turn. I say that, and I, I turn stuff pretty big. You can see that on this set of jaws, you can reverse these jaws, and uh, so I can actually grip something fairly large with it. Um, mind you, I'm not holding it by very much, you know, when I'm out here, and that's reversed. But I often will start off with this, uh, let's say with a piece of, let's say to make wherever my pin chuck ended up out there. Um, I started off with maybe a half inch rod there. And so, of course, my collet chuck for this only goes up to 3 eighths or 10 millimeters. So I have to first start it off with this to hold it in order to then turn down a section of it to get it down to uh, what I can grab on my with my uh, collet put the then reverse it around in here and then take the rest of the metal down until I get right to the diameter of my pen shaft and so every pen every different pen size that you have you could have one of those little mandrels so you could have one. I'd want to do it in steel for the uh, seven millimeter one because I don't think aluminum would stand up. But uh, certainly three eighths manages okay, and all the ones up above. So three eighths, uh, ten millimeters, twenty five, sixty fours, all the way up. You could have one of those pin mandrels set up for it. Um, and then, same thing, if I want to make, so let's say then you want to make, this is from a kit, but that is just a piece of aluminum, 
and I could mill that right on this and make make my complete pen on this. And that's that's my goal for this year is to get to making all of my pen parts with with this guy. So even the little bushings and stuff to go in. Uh, so I bought some copper rod and some different things that, that you don't normally get in pen kits. And I've got some metric threads and fine threads and stuff in order to, to actually build the kits right up from scratch. So that is sort of the goal for now. Um, hopefully I don't blow them out the end like that all the time. But Anyway, um, another interesting thing, talk about bang good I guess. Um, oh, by the way, I should tell you, uh, right now on Amazon, um, they have ER20 uh, collet holder for $17, $17.99 I think, um, with two-day delivery, Prime, if you're on Prime. Now that's a great deal, because if you go to Banggood, it'll be $3 cheaper, but uh, you'll wait 20 days for it or more. So the next container is full. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody's itching to get those, um, like I say, check out Banggood. Uh, just type in ER collets, whatever size you want to get. Um, so that one we were just using was a 20. Um, let's say that's, that's the size of a 25. And the 25, you have to also buy a wrench. All the 25 and the, and the 32s um, need to have either a wrench like this to, to tighten those down or a wrench like this that fits on the terms. Um, seven or eight dollars from Banggood for those. Um, oh yeah, things like, you know, when you're doing special, special uh, pill boxes and things like that in kits, and you've got a little mandrel like this. Wow, the great thing is just to be able to to put that into a into a collet chuck, and and away you go. Versus trying to put it into one of these guys, into a Jacobs chuck. Way easier to use collets, and often when I'm doing multiple things, if I know what size I'm doing. You'll notice I've got lots of extra nuts. And so maybe I'll have two or three things going and I'll, some of the, the major sizes that I use, I've got multiple sockets for them, multiple collets for them. And so I can have my piece, um, I can have several of these lined up and I can just unscrew, put it on, screw it on. And, and I don't have to take it out of this, I can keep my, my uh, concentric, con I can't even say it. Concentricity. Concentricity on that piece, you know, if I've got two or three of these things going at one time. And sometimes I'll use different, if I'm going to grip it at both ends for some reason, I'll use maybe a half inch on one end and three eighths on the other so that you know, they don't get mixed up and all that good stuff. Okay, I think that's it. Yep. Thanks a lot for your presentation, Dave. Yeah, nice Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um,